Hi again. Well, we're back again with part two. It's the next day. I just wanted to mention one other thing about these. Uh, I just briefly said that I had a V15 Mark III, and that's that. Then this, um, again, didn't have a stylus, and I got a Jayco stylus for it again, for this one, like I did for the Mark II, but I did not get the SAS stylus. I got their regular stylus. Um, I was going to buy an SAS stylus, and I thought, oh, I'll get this regular one, and I can use it on my more scratchy records, because... The SAS styluses have a limited life and you need to have, be very pristine and have very clean records when you use them. But anyway, um, I've been really blown away by this. I know they probably vary in quality, but I've been really blown away how good the, this, the regular uh, stylus is. And, I, and it wasn't expensive. I picked it up for like uh, 50 bucks or something. Uh, it's really good. Now everybody says out of the old Shaw line of cartridges at the Mark III was the best and um, I think I wouldn't say it's the best but it's a, a better all-round with that particular uh, stylus on it anyway it's a better all-round uh, cartridge right? especially for putting things up on YouTube um, but um, I've also got the uh, next one up from this the Mark IV I've uh, used and with the other three arm I think there's a video up on my channel about that too as we're talking about Shaw cartridges, I thought I'd mention this uh, cheap Shaw they brought out, more modern one. This is the M97X. A lot of people use this because it was at a reasonable price, I think about $75 to $95 uh, this one came out at. It's um, got the little brush on the front and everything, and the styluses are interchangeable. So that's um, not a bad stylus. I mean, it's not... It's not as good as the Mark II or the Mark III, but it's okay. It tracks at between uh, three quarters and one and a half grams, so it's nice and light. And it's like a knockoff of the Mark IV, I think. I could be wrong about that. I'm sure someone would correct me if I'm wrong. Um, also, what's uh, good about that, this is, I think I, I showed you this one before, which is the Shaw M97S. That's a cheap um 78 cartridge which is not bad i've got two of those i have another one here and i i used to keep this one i put the red on for the more really scratchy 78s and then i ran uh, uh this for the pristine ones but now i have the uh, rando cartridge for 78s too but uh, what i wanted to mention was you can actually interchange the uh, styluses on these and actually put it into the better, this just pulls out, you can put it into the better um, cartridge if you want. You have to be careful with some of these, uh, like not interchange them into a different type because these shafts are different sizes and you can do some real damage. But this particular one interchanges uh, quite well. So if you want to play a 78 on slightly better quality you can. So now I've got the flexibility that I've got a 78 needle for the Shaw V15 Mark II. I've got, um, uh, and I say I can also take this and put in to either one of the cartridges too. And they do make one for the Mark III at a reasonable price for online, so I might pick up a 78 one for this as well. As I've mentioned before, there's one drawback with these Grando cartridges, which I showed you earlier. The, um, they tend to pick up hum. They have like windings in here, coil windings. And if they get near a motor, particularly on the older style turntable, it will pick up some hum. So that's why I have other 78 cartridges as well. Although the overall sound of this cartridge is really, really good on 78s. But it does pick up hum. And I've heard other people complain with their um, cartridges for their all their other cartridge line that's got that feel. And I've tried them on my other decks and uh, you pick up home just the same. It's not just because that's a 50 year old turntable. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to my book and show you some other things around that I recorded yesterday. Then I'll do a bit more after that. And then there's all the blurb from the different shore cartridges, different models that we have. 
So I'll just try and cut this short. But you've uh, got all the different stuff here and the different weights and everything. This is other blow for different other cartridges. That's for the um, other model arm that I had on a turntable you probably saw on my videos. And then I get to my speakers. I have these uh, Tannoy 15-inch um, monitor gold speakers. I'll just take it out and show you. There's one there with Merry Christmas on it. And um, their dual concentric speaker has been fantastic. I went to the factory with my dad and picked those up when I was a little boy. I remember distinctly going. And that's the same cabinet right there. And this is just all the blurb from the tannoy and there's a crossover units. And this is my, oh yeah, there's more speakers there. This is, I have a tannoy uh, subwoofer which I use with my the Yamaha power amp when I'm using that, which is there, and there's a Tannoy subwoofer hiding in the corner there. So that's the blurb for the uh, subwoofer. And then we get on to the, my Bose speakers, which are my rear speakers. And I tended to use those antique Bose speakers because they have a really nice sound coverage, as you can see here. And they're really cool. And that's the blurb for those which I'll just show you the speakers I guess yeah mounted up on the wall there as you can see pretty cool there's two of them another one up over here and that's my uh, for my rear surround sound and I have a, another center speaker there moving right along this is uh, my C2 Yamaha uh, preamp, which I showed you a little while ago. And that's all the blurb on that. And I think we're just about there. Just so, and this is my DBX about the ambient sound I was telling you about. This was my tube amp I had. You've probably seen this in uh, some of my uh, other videos I keep moving my system around all the time and that's the uh, tube it uses a 12AX7 my system changes all the time from one thing to another this is my Macintosh this is the manual for my Macintosh power amp hang on I'll just take this out here that's the uh, Mac amp and there's the actual amp there, I've had a plastic cover made for it because it's kind of cool and I've changed the lights out with LEDs which is a, a good mod on those. And there's the other amp that goes with it there. And that's the information on that. Different grass and stuff. It used to come in a nice wooden box. It would have been nice to have had that. But anyway, with the plastic you can see the works. And, uh, and here's the original manuals for the... Uh, 600 which is this out there and there I just got the whole box in there and this one is for the tuner which is right there so now we're back to looking at turntables again this is what I'm currently using to play my um, I use it mainly to play more scratchy records I've picked up or ones I haven't washed yet or cleaned and um, it's got a pretty good uh, stylus on it. I'll just show you a brief little video off the screen what kind of one it is. Of course, it's a DJ turntable. This is a PT2000, one of the early Gemini one. It's a high torque direct drive turntable. And it does basically the same as the other ones, but it doesn't have the feature where you can click the two buttons together to get 78, unfortunately. It's more like the other deck. But it's it's a very powerful uh, motor on it, and it's it's a proper DJ turntable. This is a mat I put on. Uh, this is a slip mat here, so if you were scratching, you can slip. So that's the idea of that. But I tend to just put that on because it keeps the resonance down. I got a yellow one to match the uh, nightclub uh, order on uh, pickup. That works pretty good. <laughs> Okay, one other little feature I wanted to show you that I've built in my system is that I, under the impression that you get different amplifier, different cartridges to get different sound. And it depends on what kind of record you're playing. 
So I've got my speakers hooked up so I can switch to a different amplifier. So I can just, those speakers are now off, these on, I can turn my Yamaha on, and that's got a sub, of course. And now we're running on the uh, Yamaha. And we're using the subwoofer as well. And I like to be able to go on to surround sound as well, which is good. And just change it. So, anyways, that's a little feature I did. I'm just going to sh shut, oh, hang on. We'll shut the sound off for a second here. I just wanted to point out that another important feature to put on any speakers, especially if you've got 50 year old speakers you don't want to blow up, is put a fuse in. I know there's all this about, oh, i got to use great big thick wire. <sighs> I hate to say it, it's a load of rubbish, but sounds just as good on a coat hanger. Main thing is, I've got one amp fuses in here, so if I crank my volume even too, too loud, it'll blow the fuse. Better blow a fuse and my 50-year-old speakers. So that's a little feature I did. Now I'm back, and with this particular Macintosh amp, uh, you can't blow the amplifier by being open circuit or anything, but as a precaution, because both amplifiers are turned on at any one point, this is a three pole switch, so it has a middle position. So it's completely open to both amplifiers in between switching them. So you're not going to get any stray currents and blow up your amplifiers, okay? So that's a, a nice feature to do. Anybody wants a circuit for that sometime? I can help you out with that. You only have to switch the one red wire from each channel and keep and just put your grounds together because it's common ground to the chassis on all these amplifiers. Another little thing I have here is one of the 45 players. You, everybody's seen this comes in two models. This is the just the deck version and that plugs in through a preamp in the same way a regular record work, player works, but it just works the um uh, for 45s and they have a volume on here which is just like a pad so it's best just to bypass that and just use the switch and put in a modern cartridge I have another one in the other room that has the amplifier built in maybe I'll give that a play for you just to show you yeah so this is the one with the amplifier built in so you can rock around the clock with the 45s if you want to They're uh, two amps, of course. I put a modern pickup in it. I still got some work to do on the other one. But uh, that's uh, another little thing. I've got lots of other turntables kicking around, but this is what I've got in my main system. Anyway, that was my little bit of self indulgence at the end of the year and a little look at my system, what I have at the moment, anyway. So um, I hope you enjoy that and I hope you keep watching my videos. Happy New Year to everyone and goodbye.